Welcome into the ShopFix channel. In this episode, I want to show you how you can completely remodel a ceiling. The first step we'll tackle is removing all of the popcorn texture from the ceiling. In the next step, we'll cut the existing drywall and then place our new drywall in to make a patch. And finally, I'll share some tips and tricks for mudding the joints and then painting the ceiling to get a nice fresh look. Let's get right into this. Shop Fix, your free online source for everything DIY. Before we can get started on removing the popcorn ceiling texture, we're gonna wanna cover the floor with thin plastic sheeting. I recommend taping the edges of this plastic sheeting to the wall, not only to keep it in place, but for the easiest cleanup after you're all done. You wanna make sure that you have plastic sheeting down to cover any carpeted areas the entire project. Let's begin the popcorn ceiling removal process by spraying the material with warm water from a spray bottle. For larger rooms, I would recommend using a larger spray bottle. And for huge projects like an entire home, I would recommend using a pump sprayer or an electric sprayer. Once the area that you'll be working on is thoroughly soaked with warm water, you can begin to scrape the ceiling with a putty or taping knife. When scraping the ceiling to remove the popcorn ceiling texture, I would make sure to use gentle strokes. You surely don't want to gouge the ceiling because then you'll have more repairs afterwards. If the popcorn ceiling texture isn't falling off easily, you'll want to re-soak with more warm water. After removing the majority of the popcorn ceiling texture in one section, I would lightly spray it again to skim off the remaining popcorn ceiling texture. Make sure to be cautious over areas that have drywall mud or drywall tape because you don't want to ruin those joints. After you've gone through this process, don't be surprised if your ceiling remains damp for 10 to 20 minutes. Most of the time, removing popcorn ceiling texture is a breeze, but where it becomes a little more tricky is wherever there's been a patch or an area that's been painted over. Patch and painted areas are just going to be more resistant and it's going to be much harder to get off. You may have to scrape a little bit harder and you also might have to spray a lot more water over these areas to remove the popcorn ceiling texture. Let's continue this removal process over the entire length of the room, starting from one side and working our way to the other side. When you're working around edges or corners of the wall, you'll want to work parallel to the wall and not perpendicular, and that's because there's a tape joint, and if you do work perpendicular, your putty knife might get under the tape and rip that joint off. You can see the tape, it's a little bit yellower, and if you use this method, you're gonna keep that tape joint intact. Here's another example of how to work along the edge to keep that tape joint intact. In the process of removing ceiling texture, you'll oftentimes run into a recessed light. You're gonna need to remove the light bulb and remove the cover to the recessed light and that'll allow you to clean up the edges real nice. Now we've successfully removed all the popcorn texture from the ceiling, and now we can begin work on patching and repairing the holes in the drywall. Before cutting any of the existing drywall, I'd make sure that all your electrical wires are securely mounted to the ceiling joist. Now, when you start your repair, you might not have as large of a gap that I'm working with here. I had such bad water damage that that whole area pretty much just fell out of the ceiling. And then I did some rough cuts around it uh, just to get a perimeter real fast. Whether you already have a hole in your ceiling or you're cutting one out, you'll probably have some leftover drywall nails that you'll have to remove from the ceiling joists. Now we'll go ahead and measure and mark the location of where we're gonna cut the existing drywall for our new patch. For much smaller openings in your ceiling, you could cut the drywall first, place it on the ceiling, and then just use that as a template of where you're gonna cut. However, this repair is so large that I'm gonna need to actually mark out the perimeter first, and I'm gonna make sure that it's exactly square so that when I cut the drywall, I can just cut it a perfect rectangle and it's gonna fit in the ceiling perfectly. If you're using this method, you'll wanna make sure that you have perfect 90 degree angles in your corners and make sure your lines are straight with the joists. I'll be utilizing a razor blade to cut most of the drywall. However, a drywall saw just like this would also be a great option. 
When cutting the existing drywall, I would just make sure that you take your time and cut exactly on the line so that your new drywall fits in really great. Another good reason why you might want to cut the existing drywall before cutting the new drywall to measure it out, because you might not know which parts of the ceiling are still structurally intact until you start cutting. One good thing to note here is that you don't have to make the cut in the existing drywall along a ceiling joist, because we can use furring strips to basically create a platform for the new drywall to be screwed onto. And so keep that in mind when you're making this existing drywall cut. The main goal here is simply to remove all the damaged drywall so that your edge is structurally sound. With precise measuring and careful cuts, we can get a perfect rectangle for our new drywall. Next, we'll securely fasten the existing drywall's perimeter on the ceiling joist. You don't have to get too carried away about putting screws everywhere. However, you want to make sure that you have screws all the way around the perimeter, through the drywall, and into the ceiling joist, so that the whole perimeter of the drywall where you cut, that whole edge is securely mounted. Because oftentimes it will be hanging down. Mine was hanging down quite a bit, so I had to raise it up by using drywall screws. Now, these specific boards aren't quite as narrow as furring strips, however, I needed to make a little bit larger of material for the drywall to hang onto because it's such a large patch. We'll be mounting the furring strips on top of the drywall, and essentially all you have to do is make it a couple more inches past your drywall so that you can simply mount it with drywall screws. The boards that I use for the furring strips are half inch in thickness. When I'm screwing in these drywall screws, you'll oftentimes see me check the screws placement with my thumb, and basically I'm just making sure that there's enough gap to place drywall mud. We're going to go ahead and repeat that process in the same manner on the other side of our repair. One thing to note here is that furring strips only need to be placed parallel to the ceiling joist. There's no need to create any furring strips on the perpendicular side of the ceiling joist because the ceiling joists are already present on the very edge of the perpendicular sides. And when mounting them to the drywall, you want to actually hold down the furring strip on top of the drywall, otherwise your drywall screw will push up the furring strip and then you won't get a secure attachment. So here's how a repair is looking after all of the initial steps. If one of your furring strips is hanging lower than the ceiling joist, you can raise it up by screwing in a 2x4 on the edge of the furring strip and it'll lift it up to match it and then you can drive screws in on the side of the ceiling joist. We're going to be measuring and cutting out our new drywall and one thing you'll also want to measure is the thickness of the drywall because there are various thicknesses and you'll want to make sure to match that correctly. You'll want to transfer on the width measurement that you measured from the ceiling and then mark it alongside your drywall. With your measurements marked on the drywall, then you can take a straight edge and draw a line straight through all your points. Then you'll want to take a razor blade to score your marked line and then cut the drywall. Then we'll use that same process to measure and mark the length of our new drywall. Then we'll take a straight edge to mark that line all the way across our drywall so we can score it with a razor blade and cut it out. We're going to be taking our new drywall that we just cut out and mounting it onto the ceiling. To enable one hand to be free to drive in drywall screws, you can mount a drywall strip along one edge and it'll help you hold the drywall up so you can drive in drywall screws. Now with the new drywall partially attached to the ceiling, we can use two hands to drive in one and a half inch screws all the way around the drywall along the ceiling joists. With all the drywall screws mounted to the other side, now we can rip off that drywall that was acting as support for the left side. And we'll continue that process by mounting one and a half inch drywall screws along the left side ceiling joists. Make sure when you're screwing in these drywall screws that you're sinking them into the drywall a bit so that a layer of mud can go on top of them. Well, after mounting a few more drywall screws to the middle joist, we'll be all complete with replacing the drywall on this damaged ceiling. Sometimes after you've screwed in your drywall screws into the ceiling joist, it'll pull up the existing drywall a little bit and the previous nails that held it up before will be sitting a little bit proud and you'll have to hammer those home.
Before moving on to mudding our joints in the drywall, we're going to take this hand sander and sand some of the existing spots of the drywall where it's uneven. Some of the spots that may be uneven on your ceiling include previously patched areas, such as the one that I'm sanding here, or you may have an area where the mud joint was just not perfect, so you might have to sand that down a bit. Now, before we apply any joint compound to the ceiling, we're gonna make sure that all the dust is removed off of the surface. And I'm simply using a Swiffer with a little bit of water on the surface, and it picks up all the dust really great. Now we can begin applying our joint compound to the new drywall patch and also skim coat some of the existing areas of the ceiling that are pretty uneven. I'll be using a pre-mix all-purpose joint compound for this repair. To begin mudding these joints, I'm gonna first apply a thin layer of joint compound along the length of the repair. After applying this thin layer of mud, we're gonna go ahead and take joint compound tape, and I'm gonna use fiber tape, which is basically a mesh tape that infuses with the drywall mud and makes a nice repair. And you'll simply wanna apply that to one side of your repair along the seam of where your new drywall meets the existing drywall and then all the way to the other side and then you can simply cut it off with your taping knife. Then after working the tape in that thin layer of mud that we first put on, we'll go ahead and apply another thin layer of mud over the tape. You'll wanna keep working mud over the tape until you get a nice smooth surface and then you'll wanna feather the edge out. Then you'll wanna repeat that process on all sides of your repair making sure that you apply the joint compound tape along the seam of your repair, where the existing drywall meets your new drywall patch. And I recommend using the mesh tape that infuses with the drywall mud, and the brand that I'm using is Fiber Tape. You'll want to finish off by lightly coating the top of the tape with a thin layer of mud and then feathering it out. You can also go ahead and cover your screw holes with a thin layer of mud here. Here's another example of how to apply a thin layer of mud underneath your tape. Apply your tape on top of that thin layer of mud along the seam, and then apply a thin layer of mud on top of your tape to finish it off. The best thing to do when you're working with an area that's uneven that's not a joint, I would simply skim coat a thin layer of mud across the surface where you believe to be very uneven. Or if you have any holes, such as where you place screws, you want to cover that with a thin layer of mud as well. After that initial layer of mud is fully dry, you'll want to skim coat over the entire surface and then lightly sand in areas that aren't completely smooth. After sanding the drywall compound, you'll want to clean off all the dust that it created before painting. The first layer of paint we're going to be putting on this ceiling is Kills 2 All-Purpose Primer, and that's going to cover up any water stains present on the ceiling and get a nice base for our ceiling paint to adhere to. Before rolling on this initial layer of primer onto the ceiling, I'm gonna quickly cut in all the way around the room. After painting the edges all the way around the room, we'll pour in our primer into our paint tray, and I'll be using a telescopic paint roller to apply the paint onto the ceiling. And I'll be using a 3 8 inch nap roller to apply the primer onto the ceiling. Well, after we apply this initial layer of primer onto the entire ceiling, we can go ahead and cut in our second layer and also roll on our second coat of this primer by using the same nap roller and the same paint tray that we used for the first coat. I would definitely recommend painting on two coats of the primer before applying any of the ceiling paint. We'll be applying the ceiling paint in the exact same manner as we did the primer by first cutting in around the edges. Now you'll notice when I'm cutting around the edges, I'm not worrying about getting any of the white paint on the walls. And this is because I plan on painting the walls as well, so it doesn't matter. However, if you're not planning on painting the walls, you'll just want to make sure that you cut in exactly in the corner. I applied the ceiling paint in the same manner that I applied the primer. And I also used two coats of ceiling paint, just like I used two coats of primer. And it came out looking great, and it was enough paint to hide any of the water stains still present on the surface. Well, with our last step finally complete, we have a finished product and the ceiling is looking really fresh and I really like how it turned out. The before and after is incredible. I went from a water damaged popcorn ceiling with large holes to a perfectly 
clean white ceiling surface. And so I really like how it turned out. And if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Take care.